Welcome to this edition of Investment Insights. Today we have John Hepburn with us. Welcome, John. Thanks, Laura. Financial markets have been performing well over recent months. What factors have influenced this performance? Global share markets performed relatively well in August, but declined in September, with many major indices down 4 to 5%. The S&P 500 index in the US fell 4.8%, its first decline since January and the worst monthly performance since March 2020. The global economy continued to lose momentum towards the end of the third quarter, with a number of economic indicators showing signs of weakening. Firstly, the supply chain constraints caused by COVID restrictions are continuing to affect many businesses as they are not able to replenish their stocks. This is leading to inflationary pressures in parts of the economy, which simply means that things are costing more to produce and more at the checkouts. Some of these short-term inflationary pressures are likely to fade heading into 2022 as borders reopen. However, some of the more medium-term pressures may see inflation linger for a bit longer. This will present challenges to policymakers and investors, which may see government and central bank support removed earlier than forecast. Secondly, markets are grappling with the prospect of higher interest rates and less stimulative policies from the world's central banks. This is something that will be firmly in the spotlight over the next year. While monetary policy is likely to remain accommodative for an extended period, we are already seeing moves to begin reducing the level of support. For example, central banks in Australia, Europe and the UK have already begun tapering the level of their regular asset purchases, commonly known as quantitative easing or QE. The US Federal Reserve is likely to do the same before the end of the year. New Zealand went into a national lockdown in mid-August following a community case of the Delta variant. How did that impact local markets here in New Zealand? Despite the nationwide Level 4 lockdown, the local share market posted its best monthly performance of the year in August, up 5% on the back of an impressive August reporting season. This gave the local market a much needed boost after a lacklustre performance for much of 2021. The bulk of New Zealand listed companies delivered strong results and issued upbeat output commentaries while coping admirably with the challenges that continue to impact some sectors. Performance in September was more subdued for our local market, with the NZX50 rising a modest 0.4%. This however was much stronger than the decline seen across other global share markets during the month. Vaccine rollouts sped up in recent months. Is this good news for financial markets? The Delta variant of COVID is in retreat globally. This is positive news for the global economy and financial markets. The weekly average of new cases has fallen to a three-month low, some 35% down from the peak in late August. In addition, the vaccine rollout continues to progress. A mere 10 months after the first vaccines became available, more than 46% of the world's population, which equates to around 3.5 billion people, have received at least one dose. In many countries, the numbers are much higher, with China, France and the UK all above 70%. New Zealand has well and truly picked up the pace and is not far behind. From an economic perspective, countries with low vaccination rates are still struggling, with Australia and New Zealand reintroducing lockdowns to allow vaccination campaigns to catch up. We expect the vaccine rollout to have a positive impact on financial markets, supported by the reopening of the global economy. The OCR is expected to continue rising. How likely is that? The Reserve Bank of New Zealand held the official cash rate at 0.25% in August as the country went back into lockdown, but increased it to 0.5% in October, the first increase since 2014. In deciding to lift interest rates, the Reserve Bank acknowledged the difficulty that many businesses, particularly in Auckland, have endured amidst the recent restrictions but also pointed to strong business and household balance sheets, ongoing fiscal support and a strong terms of trade as reasons to believe that activity will recover quickly when restrictions are eased. The next OCR decision is in late November and this will also see the release of a fresh set of economic and financial projections. We should get a lot more information at that time as well as some important insights into how the Reserve Bank sees the lingering effects of the lockdowns and how capacity pressures across the economy have altered its inflation expectations. Markets are currently pricing in another 0.25% hike in November, which would see the OCR end the year at 0.75%, while expectations are for it to reach around 1.5% by this time next year.